So let's take a look at where we stand with the PIC 16F 1825, which has been programmed with the firmware to convert it into a I square C PWM slave so it can control a servo and we can control servos through the I square C bus. A master can program positions to the servo and the 1825 will generate the PWM signal, the appropriate PWM signal plus timing. It also measures the current in the servo. So what I'm going to do is on the power supply here I'm going to go ahead and turn it on and turn it off. Now look at the 1825. Let's get this wire out of the way. So here we go. Let's go ahead and reset it by just applying power again, shutting it off and on. You'll see it has a self-test, a blinking LED, and then it's ready to go. And in general, the PWM is set to 1500. And this is, of course, with 50 hertz. PWM, 1500 microseconds, is the default position. Now, when we program or ship out this device, its default I square C address is 5F. So let's go ahead and take a look at that. So here we have the computer. We've brought up our handy Pyraptor Java graphical interface. And what I'm going to do is scan for devices. And you see that the address showing up is 5F. So the idea now is to be able to program a different I square C address into the device. So what you need to do is select the 5F. Of course you can use 5F if you want, but we'll select 5F. It shows up in this field. We have the right command. We're going to send one byte and the command to change the I square C address is FE hexadecimal. So we type in FE and just write that to the device. So we just wrote that to the device so now it's ready to accept an I square C address and we have to input twice the I square C address. So we will enter E8. Now remember it has to be an even number and we will write that to the device. So we just wrote it so now, if we scan, we should see the new address show up. And sure enough, we get 74. So that is the new address for the device. That simple. Let's go ahead and try this again. If I select a device, you have to select it. It ends up in the field here. We need to send the command FE. Write it, one byte. And then the next command is the address. Remember, twice the address in hexadecimal. So we will enter, let's say, A2 as the address and write it. Now we'll go over here and scan. And you'll see 5.1 appear. So that is the new address for the device. The address is stored in the in the EEPROM of the PIC 16F 1825. Let's go ahead and take a look at that again. So as before, there right there is the uh, PIC, the PIC 16F 1825, which has stored a new I square C address. Let's go ahead and lay this down, and there you have it. And by the way, we have this nice bus here, so you can hook up uh, six devices and control an arm with six degrees of freedom. You can also put multiple buses and control two arms with six degrees of freedom all through one I square C master. Very convenient. And of course here's the power raptor. Now the key is to go through the Malax connector on this device. So make sure you have a Hiroshi DF11 Hiroshi 4-pin to a 4-pin Malax and you go through the Malax and you go through the Mullex connector. Now, a little review of this board, you can see the two jumpers there. Those two jumpers uh, add a 10K resistor. One jumper adds 10K to the data, one jumper adds 10K to the clock, to VDD, which is supplied by the Pyroraptor. 
So this is special. This this Malax connector can accept five volts or 3.3. And uh, however, the other Malax connectors, the six pin Malax co connectors, we call the they supply six volts since they're going to control the servo motors and provide power to the PIX 16F 1825. Now recall that uh, this board does have an on-chip regulator so it takes six volts and converts it to five volts to power the 1825 and also provides as you can see here you have three terminals where you can solder in three wires six volt power a signal and a ground and hook that up directly to your servo and there you go your servo is now an I2C PWM slave so that concludes our introduction into changing the I2C address of the PIX 16F1825 that we ship with the firmware with a default I2C address and now you can put whatever I2C address you want